Want entertainment designed just for you? Then check out customizable streaming TV from Xfinity. It makes your life simple, easy, awesome. Xfinity gives you customizable streaming TV options. Enjoy the most free shows anywhere on any device and even access your streaming apps right on your TV with X1. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today to learn more. Restrictions apply. Welcome to Audio Gyan with Kedar Nimkar, a podcast that documents insightful conversations with Indian designers, artists, musicians, writers, thinkers, and creatives of all types. Catch us on iTunes or visit audiogyan.com for more Gyan sessions. Here's your host, Kedar Nimkar. In this new season, I am introducing a new format called AudioGAN Case Studies, where I will be diving deep in just one product, case study, service, campaign or a design solution. Starting off with the first one with Ajay Shah today. Ajay is a furniture designer and alumnus of NID Ahmedabad and has practiced design in India for last 20 years plus. He is a founder of ASDS, Ajay Shah Design Studio and also started Rubber Band. Ajay comes from a school of thought where he believes design thinking can be applied to products, spaces and graphics. Although he specializes in furniture design, he finds himself applying design principles to all areas of design. And today we are here to discuss a case study of rubber band product, the table that almost wasn't. Thank you Ajay for giving us your time and it's a real pleasure to have you on audio again. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, so I'll give you a quick background about uh, the table that was almost for the listeners uh, who, uh, who may or may not have stumbled upon the product. Uh, it is the first in uh, the series of the new collection of furniture by rubber band. The table is made of aluminium and is a result of stamping and folding of sheet metal. There are three main components which come together with the help of connector plates and brackets. The design is an expression of the new found form resulting from a material and construction language. The color application on the flat metal surface removes the association of metal and simply allows it to exist as an object. So this is a small description which I found on the website about it. Sure. And yes, uh, we'll start off with a basic question like how did you start rubber band and why did you start it? And then moving on and going deep, in, deep dive into the product it's itself. Sure. So yeah, can you tell us uh, what's rubber band? So rubber band was essentially founded in 2007. Mm-hmm. We, at any design studio, there is always surplus time when in between projects. Uh, so this is a case where we had a lot of surplus time, projects were less, and we had the ability to, you know, conceptualize something that we wanted to create for ourselves. We never really saw it as a brand. The intention was really to make stationery that we could use for ourselves. I'm a very avid collector of stationery. I've been buying stationery wherever I travel. And therefore, the intent was to be able to make something that could be of uh, global standards, but designed and produced by us. It took us a few years to crack it. We, the first few you know, initial prototypes that we made were not to the standards uh, that we would like it to be. So it took us a few years to crack it. And after we, we sort of cracked it, we realized the potential uh, of the product being retailed. And then we branded it called Rubber Band. We called it Rubber Band and... That's how we started uh, thinking about selling it. So the initial uh, origins of the rubber band story is never to really start with an intent of selling or to be able to make it into a brand or anything like that. It was just more of a fulfillment of design uh, the way we wanted it to be. Mm. Produce quality kind of stuff. Yeah, and also I think, you know, every independent design studio, or designer for that matter, will always have this wish of working with uh, without a client. I mean, wanting to do things exactly the way they want to do it. I think in certain cases, if I think if rubber band was designed for a client, it wouldn't be the way it is. Uh, you know, we, we've stuck to certain ideologies. We've stuck to certain beliefs that we have for the product. And that's only possible when you become a client yourself, for yourself. So that's how we, we saw rubber band. And it's been the, the same case ever since. It's been about almost 10 years now. And over the last 10 years, the only thing that we've followed is that we will do it the way we want to do it. We will not be dictated by market. We will not be dictated by commerce only. Commerce is a very important essence of the entire thing for making it a success. But commerce doesn't need to dictate design. It's got to be the other way around where design in some sense creates uh, awareness. 
uh, and design creates uh, its own uh, identity so we've stuck to that for all these years and that's how rubber bands been able to survive for the last 10 years mm-hmm. uh, we've thrived we've had ups and downs as any brand will have uh, we've been independent so far uh, and it's 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 a it's a task you know and then we the days you enjoy it tremendously mm-hmm. and there are days it's it's difficult but that's i think it's a part of any entrepreneurial process absolutely that happens mm-hmm. interesting and uh, what's like i mean people shop for stationeries and bags and furniture uh, and more stuff on rubber band uh, although the products are uh, like great in quality can you we'll discuss more about tables so you have like around 7 or 8 types of tables so can you just uh, quickly so I'll, brief us i'll just go one step back yeah oh, sure uh, essentially when we started rubber band the like i said we started with the paper products mm-hmm. which included a series of notebooks and uh, writing material it's only about 2 years ago uh, that we bought furniture into the uh, category as a category into rubber band the reason we did this is i had from 2007 when we started rubber band i also created a parallel brand at that particular point in time few years down the line called industrial playground mm-hmm. and industrial playground was the coming together of two very important things that i uh hold as a designer one of the things is that i would like to be able to make things that have an industrial design approach to it mm-hmm. okay so it's not it's not artistic it's not it's not random it's a very very conscious industrial design approach that i follow and therefore the industrial part comes from there and the playfulness led me to creating a brand called industrial playground mm. so industrial playground coexisted along with rubber band for many years it's only about 2 years ago that we decided that we can merge the furniture bit into rubber band and not necessarily have two brands and that's how the furniture component came into rubber band mm-hmm. so just about 2 years ago now we we found a unique situation over here we found a situation that we are not able to really classify what sort of furniture this is mm. i mean is it office furniture is it home furniture most furniture brands will classify it in some sense either for a specific purpose and since we had been designing all this furniture for a long while and there were different pieces of furniture all having their own little stories we realized that this is furniture for the young in mind so people who so we don't have an age barrier there's no entry you know there's nobody saying that this is meant for somebody who is more adult or it's more for young we said if anybody who is young in mind mm-hmm. will appreciate this furniture so if you see the entire rubber band furniture collection the way it is now it's furniture that's got a new formal language it uses material where there is an application of color it uses a certain formal style that's very contemporary mm. it has no roots in a direct way to what is happening in design in india or indian roots in that sense none of that is there okay and it's a conscious effort because I, and that's a separate bit i can tell you a little later but all the furniture that you see over here is extremely contemporary it's it's there is an effort to make it very pragmatic there's an effort to make it give it a formal style that's distinctive and i think as you mentioned in the starting note it's it's the appropriate use of material it's the appropriate use of it's there's a certain economic approach towards design mm-hmm. and when i say economic it's nothing to do with the money part of it it's to do with the economy of materials economy of processes all of that is being used to design a piece of furniture there is no excess there is no flourish there is no unnecessary you know uh, uh, detailing all of it has been done to be able to arrive at a concise solution mm. so there is a, there is a it's a very important uh, uh, approach that we we we've been we've been able to self imbibe you know and we work every time we work on a piece of furniture we we make a very conscious attempt to say that we don't stray from that idea there is a temptation very often that we will try and do something which is radically you know different but i think if you look at good design you know and dieter rams 
I was just going to come yes, to that. Yeah, Dieter Rams just said it very well. He said, "Good design is as little design as possible." Yeah. Amongst many, you know, the ten principles he's written down for what is good design, we believe in that. Mm-hmm. So, if you see, there's there's a certain amount of restraint in design. There's a certain amount of control that we have, mm-hmm. and that's how our furniture and our products and you know our stationery has been evolved. And it's not an approach that we can exercise very freely with our clients. Mm-hmm. So, at ASDS, I'm still dictated in a fairly large way a little lesser now earlier you know we had to prove the point now people come to us because of the style that we have but having said that in case of rubber band we stick to a very serious approach to design mm-hmm. in fact i remember i did one interview with varun grover where i asked right. him about limitations right and he said that creativity yes it thrives on limitations but certain times the limitations are put by others right or sometimes it's self own limitations sure. so in in case of at least my exposure to industrial approach to uh, designing prop, uh, designing uh, furniture or any of that uh sort right uh, was towards teeter rams but i think uh, it's it's a similar philosophy where we have put in some constraints to uh develop certain kind of furniture that you have right it's not just the furniture i mean mm. the the oh, it's it's the philosophical approach more it's a, it's yeah. more of an ideology that we've been able to uh uh and it's it's not a it's not a ideology that we are completely constrained by it's and mm-hmm. we constantly try and evolve it in our heads mm. so for instance it's not something that we have a blind faith in we question it mm. we discuss it uh we we reject okay a lot of our designs we will self reject it because we feel if it doesn't f- if if it's not there there is no need that we see really uh, you know to force fit or do something just for the sake of doing uh, we are not in the we are not fortunately we are not in the business of creating a large collection just for the sake of it we are not mm. in that space mm-hmm. uh, we believe that if we make a table or we make a chair or we make a piece of uh, a, a product then the intent is let's just make the best that we can within that mm. category i don't think it's necessary for us to say that we need too many pieces correct uh, it's fine we are happy with that you yeah. know yeah yeah so coming to the pieces can you just quickly briefly tell us about the seven or eight different types of tables or uh, furniture aspects which you have so the furniture we have before we get into the tables we have what we've done is we've been able to categorize it into the types of furniture that we have so we have chairs we have tables we have lounge seating uh we've got uh, outdoor seating mm-hmm. we've got benches but again very important to emphasize over here there are two clients that we cater to uh, in that sense one of the clients that we cater to is where we work directly with architects okay we we work very closely with architects it's something that i really enjoy and we are trying to provide solutions in furniture design for their projects which is the most serious kind of work that i that i do mm-hmm. okay it's it's to be able to find the right solution for a particular project that the architect has designed and in in the case of that it's it's important for us to be able to find uh, a solution that matches the identity of the interior that they do mm-hmm. at the same time there are budgets and there are other things but what you see over here on as a part of the furniture collection that we have it's largely uh, we we don't while we categorize it as tables chairs and everything we see them as objects or tools that can be used in any way mm-hmm. so i mean i have if i have uh, you know if i to give you an example if i have a bench I'm not even saying that the bench needs to be used only for outdoors. It can be used in a waiting space. It can be used in any indoor uh, space. It can be used as a part of a prop element. It can be used as a you know as something that can be bringing uh, uh, bringing some life to a, any kind of interior. I'm not dictating whether it's office, home, or retail uh, or institutional. I'm saying the opportunity of using that piece interestingly exists. Mm. to come back to the point that you are asking me about specifically with tables it's we have a series of tables mm. uh that we've designed over the last few years and each table has its own aesthetic its own construction uh it has its own uh, reasoning and uh, some tables are perceived 
to be suited in a particular way so you will find uh, the the purchasing uh, for certain pieces of furniture happen more for office use more for home use but it's largely again like i said we make we make these tables not 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 directly suited for a pur- purpose mm-hmm. we try and make the piece of furniture that you can use it in different environments and different scenarios so that's the way we do it mm-hmm. uh, there are about if i'm not mistaken about 6 to 8 designs that we have mm-hmm. and uh, all sizes mm-hmm. we configure them in many sizes we have different materials uh, we work with largely metal we have various table tops uh, ranging from glass to metal to wood to even stone uh, and yeah i mean it's it's the individual pieces but they can be customized to you know with uh, attachments they can be customized to suit uh, or fulfill a particular function hmm. recently as far as office space is concerned there is a fair amount of uh, wire management that needs to be incorporated in workstations correct so all of these tables whilst they come as a as a very simple basic uh, table they all have various attachments that can be added on to it mm. to fulfill a function correct yeah. yeah so i was particularly interested in uh, knowing more about the table that almost wasn't correct uh, so where did this inspiration come from like what was the thought process behind it so some years ago mm-hmm. so one of the things that i do is i work mostly if you see the work that we've done we mostly work with metal hmm. and okay this is a old story but way back when i was doing my studies in nid hmm. for my diploma project i designed a table that was called phaedrus mm-hmm. now phaedrus was essentially the name phaedrus came from the famous book zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance and these are early influences in your life you read these books and you get very excited about the idea of quality and phaedrus is a character in zen of uh, zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance which he constantly speaks about the notion of what is quality and what is experience so anyway i had designed that table back in the year 87 88 wow. okay hmm. back all the way back then and it's a table that was close to my heart i had tried to do something that you know in nid standards back then it wasn't the conventional way to make a table it mm-hmm. was sheet metal it had some interesting features and some interesting details oh so even during college it was uh, getting hands on with your material itself yeah. and not just sketches not i mean it starts with sketching mm-hmm. but then it always is this idea of translating it to a particular material but that time you played with the real material yeah oh we nice. actually used to make things yeah okay nice uh-huh. we used to make things so anyway so going back 88 flashback come you know and since then i've been toying with the idea of trying to make a, a table in a similar method mm-hmm. and it's never happened i mean i so post phaedrus there was another table that i attempted to make which is called lisa mm-hmm. and uh, lisa didn't happen as a table because you know whilst i designed it it worked well i mean it could it could be appropriate in every sense in terms of construction in terms of form i still felt something was missing to it and it's only then that i kept working a little more on it and i started tinkering with it and i you know tried various configurations in terms of how we can construct the table and i think about just about a year and a half ago i finally got to a point where i thought this is it hmm. this is the table the way i'd like it to be hmm. i don't see anything more that i can do with it in in the format that it is uh i love the proportions i love the construction i love the fact that it's made in a such a simple way i love the fact that it's got it's the roots are from 87 88 okay that's the roots and the evolution as a person as a designer that i've gone through mm. i mean it's a massive evolution i mean all of us go through that right correct so you can see the 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 maturing of the design thinking that's happened since then to now mm. uh, all of it worked perfectly well and there's a sense of satisfaction mm. there's a sense of relief there's a sense of you know saying that we this is right 
and i by the way i mean that's how i work in a lot of my projects when i'm working on any self development projects for rubber band till i don't get that feeling that this is right mm. i'm not able to let the product release in any sense mm. i have to feel even if it's a small notebook that i design or if it's a writing instrument or anything that i work on i mean until i don't feel that this seems right mm. okay it's a very odd kind of a yeah. statement to make you know i mean how do i know it's right i think it's more to do with intuition it's more to do with instinct you know f- instinct exactly yeah. it's more to do with instinct you know you feel that this is right mm. so that's how the table that almost wasn't happened mm. and the reason i called it the table that almost wasn't is because it almost didn't happen i mean almost it could have i mean had i lingered with it or had i procrastinated it a little longer it probably wouldn't have happened mm-hmm. yeah that's how it happened wow wow <laughs> mm. in fact uh, i have more deeper question on the same lines but we'll come back to uh, it later um what is your take on the products uh having too many joints because uh, my this is my personal question where right. i've slightly um uh, exploring some furniture uh, i have seen like uh especially with you right uh, i have seen it live uh, in my time and like there are very less curves uh the object itself placed on the shelf uh are more important than the material itself so in fact when i saw it for the first time i experienced what is called invisible design right uh so what are your thoughts on um products having too many joints i mean especially in case of the table wasn't there is a single body or a uh, die cut and and things like that so there is no rule for this mm-hmm. uh if if i if i was to say do i have a a view point on too many joints i don't think so i i don't think it can be classified in that way but I if you see now these days macbook also they call it uni body single body so right. i think that is something i think it's it's the nature of the times that we live in mm-hmm. there is if you see okay look at design the way it's heading mm-hmm. uh, overall i mean if you see overall there is this factor of uh, you know there is this factor of conciseness i mean i love the word conciseness in design mm-hmm. uh, even when we converse okay we we find ourselves being a little more to the point mm. now i mm. mean the way the world is at the moment uh we find that every aspect of design you know from thought to realization uh, there is and because a lot of this is getting made in numbers and there is the factor of mass production mm. Mm. uh people are constantly asking you know if there is a way that we can find a far more economical way Optimized. to be able to make make this now this is it's almost being in some sense we are influenced by everything that we see around us and we realize that the idea of doing uh lesser is not it's just not for the aesthetics mm. it's not it's not for it's not to be able to say that i'm going to start the entire exercise by making lesser joints mm. you don't start like that but i think if you are a fairly aware person and you you see things around you uh you will get this feeling of uh wanting to find a solution that seems appropriate and therefore you might reduce you might you know you might uh, the excessiveness that used to be there in our lives at one point in time is anyway got lesser we i don't think anybody wants to be sitting in an oversized sofa anymore i don't think anybody wants to be you know living in uh, environments that are overcrowded or or i think it's it's almost surrounding us in some sense that 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 idea of being happier with lesser is uh, is starting to happen in every sphere of our lives mm. and i think that's just sort of reflecting in the furniture mm. in some sense i uh, think there is other aspect to it where is there any other aspect like being cohesive because there are different materials right. so i'll give you an example where uh, like i just been to one apple store and right. the entire staircase was just one stone right so they could have easily broken down and use multiple parts to it but right. it was just carved out of one stone so what would be the reason for that i mean in terms of again unibody or i, I don't think it's unibody i think it's uh, i think it's the idea of uh being able to so i've seen the uh, the staircase that you're talking about and 
there is a certain amount of i would say the intent is largely in the case of all of these kind of exercises that you you see is they want to be able to uh, make it far more uh, there is a simplification process mm mm-hmm. there is a process of simplification there is a process of of being able to there is also this thing of trying to reduce a visual assault uh, <laughs> you know when you see certain things and you you realize that there is too much happening subconsciously in some manner it's assaulting on your senses mm mm-hmm. uh so i think a lot of good product design today is making it easy on the eyes a lot of good product design that we engage with and we interact with the purpose is being defined so there is no there is no need for me just to go back to the stakes for a moment there's no need for me to to excessively over construct something which is just a flight of stairs mm-hmm. there is no need and yeah you're right the cohesiveness the 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 tightening of the form the you know reduction mm. the uh, the the tactile quality of a staircase you know when my hand is runs touching over, runs over a baluster those are the more important aspects i don't have to glorify it mm. i don't have to glorify it and i don't have to use expensive materials nor do i need to be able to create uh, a a detail that needs to shine out there is no need mm. in fact the moment it gets integrated within a larger space it becomes a component within the overall space correct it's not it's not attempting to glorify itself mm. that way that way being invisible yeah that that in that sense it becomes invisible and a part of a larger statement mm. uh, in the case of a staircase mm-hmm. i think the maturity of good design or when you say you speak about good design i think it's it's to be able to have again going back to where we started the philosophy or ideology that you work with and you mm-hmm. you apply it to the to the complete project mm-hmm. you don't you don't you don't try and think of the project from one one idea and then suddenly start doing you know other things in the components that that are included in the project mm-hmm. you carry that idea across everything mm-hmm. and you're right i mean apple is a good a yeah. good example of the way it you know creates environments mm. uh, and the, the you know translating right from product to environment to the way they communicate all of that you i mean it's a common uh, it's a common example that you might might have heard from many people but there are other brands that also do the similar things mm-hmm. i think it's important to have a larger concept and then find a way which is what in some sense rubber band wants to be and wants to do correct uh, we are far smaller we still i still think 10 years is not very uh, old you know mm-hmm. 10 years is just the beginning of what we can become i think it's helped us formulate our ideas mm-hmm. and the best of brands the best of global brands the initial period is always searching correct you know till they find exactly what they're looking for and then then it opens up and then there are mm-hmm. there's growth i think the biggest driver for these kind of philosophies is that why you are building such things and then right. it it translates into all the things you make like tomorrow if you come up with a t-shirt as well right uh, it it just translates the same idea exactly yeah. yeah yeah so coming back to the table that wasn't um, like what what made you choose uh, aluminum over other materials so like i said it's been an evolution it's mm-hmm. been something that i've been trying to do for a long while aluminum has a certain amount of uh, it's a softer material mm-hmm. i can if if given the right quality of aluminum uh, i'm able to fold it exactly like paper okay. okay i'm able to give it the similar quality that i would it has a similar kind of a quality uh that you would find in paper in the way it can be it can be cut it can be folded it can be uh structured mm-hmm. in 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 that sense and uh, again uh, interestingly if you see the final outcome outcome of the table it's you don't even see the aluminum mm-hmm. it's just essentially 3 mm sheet uh, that's been folded in a particular way but the moment i applied with color okay there is no material mm-hmm. there is which is what you said in the beginning when you spoke about the table is the moment the material disappears i mean had i left it as aluminum and then you have a perception 
or when you see it you know that it's a metal sheet of you know aluminum you are able to perceive it in this way but when you see it in just color mm. you're only looking at it as a shape as a form mm. and uh, surprisingly it's not very heavy the overall table is light surprisingly it's uh, it's got a lovely feel you know it's you touch it you feel it it's got a nice the color gives you gives it uh, another character correct uh, i've done the table in so far i've done the table in many colors but mm. the f- most popular color that stuck on with it is a kind of a deep bottle green correct green yeah right Even and like uh, then i've done a white and i've done a black and each time i've done a different color for different people mm. uh, the character changes mm. the moment i do that in a, a matte black okay it has a certain sophistication to it the moment i do it in a kind of a, a color of a, like bottle green it suddenly becomes a slightly more playful element and the moment i do it in white it becomes minimalist mm. so i mean literally it's a form that is almost taking to uh, creating different moods in different atmosphere mm-hmm. by just the application of color material disappears correct That's beautiful uh and uh, did you do any uh, i mean did you guys do any user research before no not thinking? at all thinking nothing so this is it right <laughs> so at any time uh, you know you always create two kinds of products one kind of product that you know uh, you're doing it more from uh no in this case user research which i want to mean is obviously the form and function is absolutely no uh, but no no clear. user research at all never no, but to, never there to, are certain aspects of ergonomics as well right so so we we've, we've been working on these kind of pieces of furniture for very long okay, so we understand so yeah, the ergonomics yeah. very well mm-hmm. we understand what's the appropriate table height we appro- understand you know what is the interaction that a chair has to have with the table mm-hmm. and then the table with the space we understand all that i mean okay. it's yeah that it's, came with like all the learning experience it's come with all our learning experience correct yeah, yeah. so we've really not done any user research and i was like i was saying that i there are certain pieces that i designed that that are not really the even the aesthetics i mean if i look at the aesthetics of the table right now it's not something that everybody will get hmm. okay it's all right yeah. you know some pieces it's all right to be able to convince the designer in you that you can push it to a limit where mm. it becomes more of a challenge for you and makes it more interesting mm. let me explain to you the table i mean the table is essentially just three parts mm. okay it's got the table top and it's got the leg elements the leg elements are identical except that it's a left and a right that's it and these three things come together with the help of they connect together with the help of a bracket mm. uh, and uh, it's it's There's as simple as that extending arms also right, right. no right. the mm-hmm. leg if you see the design mm. and i really wish this podcast was a more visual one. than i could yeah. show the table yeah but yeah but essentially it's the way the table leg is folded mm. that has an overhang okay you're right i mean it has an overhang and uh, it's just to be able to break the volume of a table in a slightly more different way mm-hmm. any table and this is okay this is very very difficult i mean if i was to you know uh if i was to talk about a chair uh, i don't know how much time we have but yeah Uh, a chair is really the most complex piece of furniture uh, furniture designer can make mm-hmm. okay, and it takes years mm. to be able to get a good chair right okay. and similarly a table i mean you always know that a table will have a table top and it'll have four legs how do you deconstruct it i mean it's so damn difficult correct today if i have to if i if i ask you to rethink a chair or if i ask you to rethink anything in a form that you you've always been used to seeing it in a particular way i am asking you to now say okay don't think of it that way how do you where do you start correct it's very yeah. difficult to disrupt it's it's extremely difficult so while it's it's taken me so many years since the time i made my first table it's it's essentially a, i think it's essentially more from a self pursuit mm. uh point of view that this exercise has happened So yeah I mean <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah yeah. I remember I did one uh, interview which is about to go live next week I uh, next to next week maybe it's with uh, uh Feni Ganatra. Okay. She made the, the bounce chair and yeah the chair that's why I had like a specific question for her like how do you get that breakthrough in your work because yeah. it was very early on for her at least. Yeah. Uh, and it's a different It happens sometimes you get yeah. a very good early yeah. breakthrough but yeah, uh, yeah you're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ajay, I have last two questions. Uh, like, first is when and how did you realize 
which was touching to the earlier point you mentioned that how and what was the process when you realized that yes the table is ready to go for manufacturing i like i said earlier i think there is a instinctiveness that intuition that you have that you no, feel no but there would be some metric in your mind right like it it is so there are there are there are there is a tangible ma- matrix of of saying that it it's sturdy it's hmm. uh it's producible in 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 from a production point of view hmm. uh we can make this using certain dies and tools hmm. uh there is uh the structural integrity and stability that we have been able to achieve so those are all your physical tangible um, you know matrix uh, that we look at and then there is the overall visual appeal there is the overall uh, proportion feel that you get mm. the sensation that the product gives you mm. that's the intangibles okay. you know anybody can evaluate design from a tangible perspective but i think the combination of the intangible and tangible makes it at least for me mm-hmm. everybody will have their own point of view correct and again very important over here to be able to say that it's not intended to shock mm-hmm. it's not intended to surprise it's not that you know sometimes design might start by saying that i want to create something that nobody's seen that's not the goal over here mm-hmm. the goal over here is to be able to say that can this be done mm-hmm. can a form be rethought can the construction become more appropriate to the material so there are very real questions at no point are we saying that i'm going to you know try and do something just for the heck of it mm. it's not that it's not of that it's a more more and like like i said i mean imagine from 88 i've been lingering on with this and trying out things so i think and it's not that i'm physically i'm trying it out all the time i think there's a subconscious kind of a growth mm. you know the maturity that seems to be developing yeah. which forms your ideas which creates you know a certain even if you pick up a pen and you sketch right today over so many years i think your mind is already determining it's that this won't work or this may work you know so correct yeah. so i think that's the reason we felt it works mm-hmm. the other thing that happened with us as far as the table that almost wasn't is that we when we made the table mm. it just so happened that there was an opportunity that we had uh, to present the table in london mm. and we showcased it in a fair in london and it had some very interesting reviews that we got back to the extent that uh, first nobody thought that this kind of design can come from india the association of design in india is still probably a little more probably a little more uh, ethnic ethnic and you're right yeah, craft ethnic and all that so when somebody saw a table which is you know made of an industrial material uh, and it's got a, a color application of that kind and it's got a everything that we spoke about so we had interesting reviews and finally i think the validation that happened over here is that manchester art gallery you know approached us and they wanted the fee- piece to become a part of their permanent collection oh how nice so that became our you know that became my strongest validation mm-hmm. in some sense i mean uh, it's it's but i i think that is in hindsight right like that is in hindsight yeah. i mean that's something that now and again it's not that we were looking for any validation mm. it's not that we trying to say okay if this happens it's great if mm. i mean there are other pieces that i've designed which i haven't got to any kind of validation and it's still my favorite pieces correct so i mean it's not that you're looking for that kind of validation but but yeah i mean today yeah i think you i i am getting the drift of what you are coming to because right. yeah it it happens when you are like mulling over the same thought process over and over again because i've learned this while uh, like while i was trying my hands on flute right and my fl- uh, flute teacher told me that uh, don't wait for the teacher to say yes or wrong yeah. playing it 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 will happen as you just keep working on it absolutely there, i think there's a phrase called anahat nada okay like basically these musicians who who perform are actually just expressing them on the stage but right. off stage they are continuously thinking about those things only right. it's, it's it's just subconsciously continuously happening there absolutely yeah, yeah. so ajay i would like to conclude with uh, one last question um, just given the time we have uh, obviously there are a lot of many questions which i have but uh, do you worry about people like stealing or replicating this particular design of the table that was almost wasn't not really no 
uh, for two reasons okay. one is that it's not a commercially uh, it's not that this particular design i'm talking i mean i've had my other designs ripped mm. uh, and there's nothing i can do about it i mean today for instance just to answer that question rubber band uh, the products the paper products are being copied by everybody i mean we we've, we've seen copies by the the largest manufacturer to the to the new entrant hmm. and there's nothing i can do about it i mean what am i going to who am i going to really you know go and tell i've had a conversation by the way with a manufacturer who's copied our products and i've said why do you do it i mean if you want to uh, do something else of your own and hmm. i think they're very it's it's all right i mean you can't do much about these things so having said that as far as a table that almost wasn't i don't I mean it would hurt me for sure if it gets copied hmm. but I think it's you got to rise above these things you hmm. can't do much about this uh, no, I feel very sad when that vitara chair is just made into a local uh, everybody yeah. seems to be the you know there are so many copies hmm. uh, we also we refuse to use copies so for instance even when I'm designing projects for clients we refuse to if, if a client tells me to use a copy of a well known brand in the project maybe if i'm doing a space design or maybe i'm doing something else it's against our ethics as a as a studio and as a brand we don't do it at all so i mean but that's the only thing i can control i can only control it in my end if it happens at all anywhere else and somebody does decide to make it and there will be versions of it i'm mm. sure but nothing i can no do but about. nothing in terms of the way steve jobs had like patented a lot of designs and so your 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 it's a little difficult because Uh, you, year as in india yeah, yeah okay. it's little difficult because then you know even if the slightest if there was to, if i had a slight you know degree of angle hmm. and if they were to change that degree of angle you hmm. know they can easily say it's not the same we've had we've had oh. these instances come up in the past we've spoken to the the person who's doing this kind of you know duplication in that sense and Mm-hmm. it just is uh, i think you got you got to keep ma- moving on and you got to keep doing uh, the next thing that you want to mm-hmm. i think that's the only way to sort of get over this mm-hmm. i think yeah plagiarism is something like which just if has its own audio again maybe more detailing out how things are copied and how things are yeah uh, yeah sorry i have la- one last question what would be the f- evolution of the table that almost wasn't i mean is there any at the or, moment or, nothing or, or at the moment nothing at the moment we just sort of uh, we we been excited with the outcome mm-hmm. and we whilst we are doing other projects we feel that there is a need not only as a designer but as a as a brand there is a need for us to constantly pursue similar kind of projects mm mm-hmm. uh, the some years ago i started something called rubber band lab okay Okay, and lab was supposed to be an exercise that I wanted to have parallel to the work that we do in rubber band, where there is questioning, there is uh, you know seeking, there is you know dismantling existing notions, and then trying to find answers. Mm-hmm. And uh, rubber band lab early on had come up with a book, a construct of a book which we call nude, mm-hmm. and it it's probably me uh, removing all my preconceived notions of a notebook okay and uh, bringing it down to its bare bones mm. so that it rubber band lab started with nude and then uh, it started with another product that we called uh, black and then the table that almost wasn't so i think it's extremely important for me that this table serves me as a reminder that i need to keep doing this mm-hmm. you know pursuit Yeah. more often cool cool i think uh, this is a good note to end this uh, obviously that thousands of things to be spoken sure. about uh, the table that almost wasn't and almost every product that rubber band is uh, producing right now thank you so for people uh, who wish to buy this rubberbandproducts.com right that's right uh, any other place where people can follow your work and uh, just i think we are on instagram mm-hmm. we are on uh, all the social media channels mm mm-hmm. uh, But yeah, rubberbandproducts.com is the place to come and see the furniture and the products. Mm-hmm. And, we and have there's a, a physical, studio. yeah, there's a uh, two physical stores. No, we we used to have a physical store, mm. but now we welcome people openly at our studio. Mm-hmm. We have a studio at Regal Cinema, mm-hmm. uh, inside of Regal Cinema, so we freely welcome uh, people to walk in and come and talk with us. Oh, nice. 
so it's not it's not a studio it's not a shop mm-hmm. it's more of a design studio okay where very often you'll find people walking in and then we'll get into conversations with them mm-hmm. and explain to them a reason for being cool. superb uh, i think all the best to like all your future products and thank, thank you, you once again for giving your time absolutely i'm happy to be okay. helping you thanks okay that's it that's it from this audio gan case study of rubberman products and that's it from today's gan session catch us on itunes savan stitcher or any podcasting app you use do rate us on itunes and follow us on twitter facebook and instagram stay tuned for more gan on audiogan.com till then bye If you've been putting off getting health insurance, now's the time to act. Open enrollment ends December 15th, so visit getcovered.nj.gov now. You'll find affordable health plans and even learn whether you're eligible to receive financial assistance. New Jersey is committed to making sure everyone has access to affordable health care. Visit getcovered.nj.gov today. And remember, you only have until December 15th to enroll.